Let's take a look at the Feetop, or Tesla's Egg of Columbus. So cool! So what is a Feetop? Well, a Feetop is a prolate ellipsoid with a length to width ratio of 1.618. What does that mean? Well, it's a fancy egg made of aluminum. But this fancy egg is so cool because we can examine electromagnetism eddy flows and lasciduous figures and so many cool science. Honestly, I'm kind of geeking out about this. But first, make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon because we exist for you for science and for fun. And we have new stuff coming out every week and it helps our channel out, so go ahead and do it. Costs you nothing. Let's take a look at the Feetop in action. Okay, so we have the Feetop and we're just going to spin it. Now, the mirror is just for show. It's not actually going to help it do its effect. We'll do it on the table after. So if we spin it, it will rise and stand on end. The center of mass actually rises away from the table. Now, why does it do that? Well, we actually don't no, we know it has something to do with friction, but it is super, super complicated. And if anyone tells you that it's not, and it's just, oh, it's the friction of the table as it spins, that's not true. It's actually precessing around two different axes, and it's really complicated. But it has something to do with friction, so we'll just go with that. If you were to treat this as a toy, this is as far as it would go. It's like a really fancy top that doesn't look like it should be a top and it'll just keep going and spinning, and then it looks kind of funny at the end, and that's it. But there's so much more to this than just a top. Now we get to go deeper into the science. This is where we need to have a working understanding of eddy currents. This lump of aluminum is non-magnetic. I have a really powerful neodymium magnet here, and I bring them together. They're not attracted to each other at all. Now, eddy currents are the flow of electrons that is created when a conductor, like aluminum or copper, is introduced to a moving magnetic field. So if I move this magnetic field past this conductor, aluminum, I'm creating a flow, a current, in a perpendicular direction to the magnetic field. Now what does that mean? Well, in essence, I'm by the movement of this magnetic field, going past this conductor, this is turning into an electromagnet, but only to the extent of there being movement of either in the conductor or the magnet. So when I move it like this, I can feel this being attracted to this magnet, which is freaky and awesome. Now, keep that in mind about eddy currents when we go back in history to 1893. So in 1893, Nikola Tesla got a display at the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition, and he had an egg, very similar to this Feetop, made of copper. And it was slightly bigger, but it had the same ratios. And copper is also non-magnetic. And using eddy currents, he used a rapidly pulsating electromagnet underneath to cause that egg to start spinning faster and faster until it stood on end. Why does that matter? Well. He called it Tesla's Egg of Columbus because way, way back in the 1400s, Christopher Columbus got an audience with his queen about a bet that he won about standing an egg on its end, and all he did was crush the end of the egg and stand it up. And it was a cheap parlor trick, and it got him all the funding he needed to go on his expeditions. Fast forward to T Nikola Tesla. He had a copper egg, and he said, you know that dude Columbus? He stood up an egg and he cheated, but I can stand an egg up on its end using nothing but AC power. By the way, AC power is way better than DC power, is what he said. This is during the War of the Currents, which means that he and Thomas Edison were really clashing about whether AC or DC power was better. And this egg of Columbus actually got him the funding that he needed to mount enough of an opposition that AC power is what we use today and not DC power. He won the War of the Currents partially based off of eddy currents and his egg of Columbus. Now we can do the same thing. Now I don't have triple phase AC electromagnets underneath my little setup here, but I do have a really strong magnet. So we're going to actually just try and 
mimic what Nikola Tesla did. We won't have a quite spectacular as effect as what he did, but it'll serve the same purpose. Now watch as I bring the magnet past the egg. It's creating an eddy current inside of the non-magnetic aluminum, which is creating an electromagnet and being attracted to the magnet that I'm passing by. And as I bring the magnet by at speed, it's causing it to spin. And as I ramp it up, as I increase the speed at which I pass it by, it will cause it to spin faster and faster and faster. Now, I can't actually make it go fast enough to make it stand on its end like this. I just, I'm not fast enough. If I had a bunch of magnets and I could time it perfectly, maybe I could, but that's about as good as I can get. Okay, now we'll just stand it up on end normally. Okay, now that it's spinning, we can show you the eddy currents in a different way. In order to be created, eddy currents only need a magnetic field and movement. The magnetic field can be stationary as long as the conducting material is moving. So currently, that aluminum is spinning, and as we bring the magnet close to it, the eddy currents are created, and it actually slows down the egg, causing it because of those eddy currents that are wanting to be locked to the magnetic field. So cool! Now let's talk about psychophysics. There's a lot of P's in that word, but there's no P sound. Psychophysics. That's weird. Anyways, psychophysics is a field that was popular in the early 1900s about how physical items can trick the brain's perception into seeing things that aren't actually there. The great physicist Ernst Mach was the first person to call this a gelatinous ellipsoid, which means that as this thing starts slowing down, it tricks the brain into thinking that it's actually moving like a liquid and not as a solid. Let's take a look at the effect. It's stunning. It doesn't do it 100% justice looking at this in a camera. It's actually more stunning when you look at it in person, but for now, just take a look. This is Destructive Creativity. I am Jonathan Allers. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and click that bell icon. It really helps the channel out. Till next time, have fun, stay safe, and do science. Bye!